snow, rain, rain, snow. Ah, it's sleeting in my face. It looks like snow, but it's sleet and snow. Come on, Woos, let's go. It's a good day to stay inside, which brings me to the topic of today's video. Where we live and where we want to live. Where we live right now in northwestern Connecticut is basically on top of a huge mountain. If there's any sort of weather system that comes through, it always snows here and it snows way more than it does in a lot of other places around here. So you can sort of think about it like this. This is the top of Mount Everest and this is us. I'm exaggerating. The real point of this video is to explain to you the criteria that we're using to evaluate these farms. But in order to do that, first, I need some props. Okay, let's talk about some of these requirements. Number one, culture. There's gotta be things to do. We're young, we don't have any kids, we earn an okay living. It would be nice to be close to the city, to take a train in, for me especially, because I do advertising, so it would be nice to go to the city to get some work. And it's just nice to go there for the weekend to have some fun. Number two, food. I don't know about you, but I eat every day. I get very tired of eating the same thing every day. I only have so many meals in my repertoire that I can cook in our kitchen here. And it's also frustrating whenever you realize you don't have one ingredient in the refrigerator and it takes 20 minutes to go to the grocery store and another 20 minutes to come back, which is where we live now. So it would be nice to live close to a variety of restaurants. We like to eat a lot of different types of things. Occasionally, you just want to eat some Chipotle. That's okay. Right now, that's not even an option. So it would be nice to live someplace where there are a variety of restaurants, independent and chain restaurants, where we could sort of mix things up. Number three, warmth. I haven't done a video about this yet, but I'm going to. Normally, we keep this house at 60 degrees, which some of you may say to yourself is ridiculous until you actually see our heating bill for the month. And this is not even actually a month, this is only three weeks. So we have them come out every three weeks and fill up our tank with fuel oil, and this is what it costs. In a video that I'm making right now, I give you a tour of this house. It was actually built in 1776. So if you go up to the attic, there's no insulation in this whole house. And so we're just constantly leaking heat. Basically, every wall and window in this entire house. So it would be nice if the house that we had was insulated, and if not, obviously we're gonna insulate it. But it would be nice if it was in a warmer place so that it wasn't so brutal to like live through the winter here. Number four, a highway. Not necessarily a highway, but a state road. A plowed road really is the requirement. Right now we live right on a state road and they keep it pretty clear. I mean, it obviously right after it snows, it takes some time for them to clear it. But for the most part, they keep it pretty clear and it's pretty easy to drive on. Now, one thing I will say is if we don't live close to a state road or a highway, uh, it can potentially be very difficult to get out of this place in the winter because the roads that are not maintained by the state right now are just terrible. You might as well just drive through the field that's right next to the road. You probably have less of a tough time getting to where you need to go. So, highway, state road, some sort of road that is plowed, not specifically by me every time that it snows. Number five, agriculture friendly. We want to have various animals, some pigs, some chickens, definitely bees already starting to work on that. It needs to be in a place where people are okay with us having these types of animals slash pets. It's really what they are, they're just pets. Number six, trees. 
really want some place that has enough land where we can plant a small permaculture orchard. In my mind, my dream is to have a place where people can come pick their own apples and there's apple cider and apple cider donuts and hay rides. It would be nice to have enough land where I could plant some of this stuff and sort of work out the kinks and figure out what works, what doesn't work. Number seven, money. This is less critical for me, but more important for Monica because she's a vet and she wants to go into holistic medicine. And so this is sort of the people that you're after when it comes to that type of service. And it has the added benefit of making us closer to restaurants and shops and things like that. Number eight, seclusion. When people ask me what kind of farm I wanted, I used to make the joke that I wanted 40 acres in the Manhattan Hollywood Hills. Obviously, this doesn't exist. But in my mind, this is what I wanted it to be. Looking around at these properties, I obviously started with a lot of land in mind. And then I've slowly whittled that down to about five to eight acres would be great. That's gonna give us enough for fruit trees. It's gonna give us enough for all the animals that we wanna have. It really depends on how the property is laid out but it could also give us some separation between the neighbors. And that's what I say about seclusion. I don't necessarily want to be secluded. I would like to be about five minutes from the nearest grocery store. So there are several ways to solve for that, but ultimately I want it to feel like we are really secluded. I don't actually want to be secluded though. So that's the tricky part about it. So now that you've seen all these criteria, there's one critical thing that I have to note. All of these are nice to have, except for this very bottom one. If you don't have culture, if you don't have things to do, if you don't have any activities around you, all of these other things are great. But speaking from experience, if there's not much culture, nothing else matters. So those are the criteria that we're using to try and find our farm. One thing that I'm thinking about is as we preview these various properties, I'm thinking about taking some video of the properties and then having uh, my wife and I discuss it and sort of talk about the pluses and minuses. It would also be really interesting to see what you guys think of these houses that we're looking at. That's basically it. Like I said, uh, I'm gonna do a tour of this house and then there's several other videos that I have in the works too. So if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.